Hello there, I'm Gary Sims from Android Authority. Now, Google recently announced support for the Raspberry Pi for its Google Assistant API that's up in its cloud services, which is absolutely a brilliant idea because it means that hobbyists and educationists and makers can now start to build small projects at home that have voice activation and are connected to Google services. Now, once I heard about this, I thought to myself, well, I've got to build a project to show you how great fun that's gonna be to build. And while I was doing that, Google actually released a special kit called the Voice Kit that includes a special piece of hardware called the Voice Hat for the Raspberry Pi that has a microphone and a, a speaker built into it and some special software, which kind of means all this stuff just happens automatically without you having to do lots of programming. Now, I thought that would be a great thing to demonstrate to you, and I tried to get hold of one. Now, it was officially released on the front of the Magpie magazine. That's the official Raspberry Pi magazine. But I couldn't get one. I looked online. I asked one of my colleagues, Robert Triggs, to go out to the shops in London, see if he could find one. He couldn't find one. So they're really hard to get off at the time of making this video. But it certainly gave me a clue about what Google were intending with this Google Assistant API. So I tried some more, and I took what I learned from the voice kit, and I took what I had here at home, and I've still managed to make a Google Assistant running on a Raspberry Pi. So if you'd like to know how to do it, let me explain. Okay, first things first, to do this, you're going to need a Raspberry Pi 3. Okay, and that's the big one, which has got the quad-core A53 processor in it. It's got lots of USB ports. It's got Wi-Fi built into it. So that's a really good device to have to do this because it doesn't need to be tethered necessarily to a network with an Ethernet cable. You're going to need a speaker of some kind that has connection for a 3.5 millimeter jack plug. That's one of those here. And you're going to need some kind of button. Now, I've got a button here on a breadboard that you can use for pressing the button to activate the Raspberry Pi. You're also going to need a USB microphone. I'll talk about that in a moment. And of course, while you're doing setup, you're going to need a mouse and a keyboard and a monitor and so on to actually uh, configure your Raspberry Pi. Now, basically, what we're going to do is we're going to take the voice kit software that Google are providing on their AI projects or website, and we're going to modify it slightly, not to work with the voice hats hardware that they're giving away with the kit, but actually to work with a normal speaker and with a USB microphone. For the first step is to download that uh, SD card image. Now, all of the links and all the actual details, the step-by-step -step details you're gonna find in the article that accompanies this um, uh, video that's over on the androidauthority.com website. I really recommend you following the steps there. But in broad strokes, what you need to do, you need to download that image and uh, write it onto an, an SD card and then boot your Raspberry Pi with, of course, a mouse, keyboard, and monitor connected to it. Now, once you've done that, we need to edit a few things because that version of uh, Linux that's running on the Raspberry Pi is specifically looking for the voice hat, that special piece of hardware that Google are having their kit, to do the microphone and to do the speaker output. So we're gonna to need to change it. Now to do that, you need to modify the boot slash config.txt file. And at the bottom there, you'll notice that Google have uh, commented out support for the built-in uh, uh, sound card of the Raspberry Pi, and they've added in support for the voice hat. Now we need to undo that change. So we need to comment out Google's things, and we need to put in, uh, again, support for the Raspberry Pi. And while you're there on your Raspberry Pi, you're gonna need to configure access to Secure Shell. You do that by going to the menu, and then finding the Raspberry Pi configuration program, go to interfaces, and then make sure that SSH is enabled. And you also need to make sure that your network is configured, go up to the Wi-Fi sign up on the top right-hand corner by the clock, and configure your Wi-Fi network. Now you need to do one other thing before you reboot, and that is to edit the file slash etc slash asound.conf. Now that's basically the sound configuration uh, file that Linux uses to work out what sound hardware is connected. Now again, the one that's shipped with this is expecting the voice hat piece of hardware, but we're gonna change it so that you can actually just use a USB mic and you can use the um, uh, 3.5 millimeter uh, sound jack that you get on the motherboard. Now you'll find the configuration file that you need to put in there again over in the article on the android.com website. Now once you've done that, it's time to reboot. So the first thing now to check is that the sound is working. 
Now, there's two little more minor steps that we need to go through. First of all, there's a file that is a Python file that Google are using to check that the audio is okay, and that's expecting, again, the voice hat hardware. Now, I give details over in the article on how you change that so that it can use the built-in hardware. Once you've changed that file, you just need to plug in a micro uh, USB microphone. Now, I didn't have a USB microphone handy, so a bit of a tip, I did have an old webcam knocking about, and I took the webcam and plugged that in, and the Raspberry Pi was able to detect the microphone that was built into the uh, webcam and use that instead. So if you don't go out and buy one, if you don't have one, uh, you could actually use an old webcam, but if you don't, you're gonna need to get hold of a Raspberry Pi compatible USB microphone. Now, once you have the microphone plugged in, once you've changed the script to make sure it's using the internal hardware, then you need to double click on that check audio link that you find on the desktop. And that will ask you then to check that you can hear the sound coming out the speaker. And it will also check that it can record your voice and repeat it to you on the speaker. And if you've done that, then you're halfway to getting this system working. Testing, testing, one, two, three. The reason you need your Raspberry Pi connected to the internet is because a lot of the heavy lifting is done using Google's cloud services. So to get this Google Assistant working on the Raspberry Pi, you're going to need to uh, connect to and configure a cloud services account over at Google. Now, all the details on how you do this are found uh, in this article, and also Google have published them on the uh, VoiceKit website. And again, there are links over at the article for that. Basically, what you need to do is go over there, you log in, you create a new project, you enable the Google Assistant API for that project. You need to create some credentials for logging in so that it knows that your Raspberry Pi is authorized to log into your account. And you do that by creating some OAuth credentials and you then download the JSON file which has those credentials in and you put them on your Raspberry Pi, renaming the file to assistant.json. And once you've done that, it should work with the Google's, Google's cloud services. Now, the last thing you need is a switch for activating the voice control. Now basically here I've got a breadboard with a switch and you need to take two wires from the breadboard here over to the Raspberry Pi. One needs to be connected to GPIO pin 23 and the other one needs to be connected to any of the ground pins. And what happens is the software that Google have provided monitors that GPIO pin and when you press the button, it then starts listening for your voice command. And finally, to get it all running, you just need to run main.python, which is a file that's part there of the kit. Again, details in the article, and that will set this whole thing in motion. And this is what it sounds like when it's working. Who is the Queen of England? According to Wikipedia, Elizabeth II has been Queen of the United Kingdom, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand since the 6th of February 1952. Now the voice kit comes with a nice cardboard box that Google have made, but you can use your imagination to put your Raspberry Pi into any kind of cardboard box that you like, cut some holes in it. Now I'm gonna show you the one that I've made. I'm a software engineer, not a hardware engineer, so don't laugh at my creation here, but here's my box. What time is it? The time is 11.23 a.m. Okay, and it does work and uh, you, I'm sure you could do better. If you do, please do post pictures in the comments. I would love to see the boxes that you make for your Raspberry Pi. Now, as a final wrap up, what have we done? We've downloaded the voice kit software from Google, which has already been shipped ready to work with the Google Assistant. We've modified it a bit to work with the standard hardware rather than the voice kit hardware. We've configured the Google Cloud so that we can actually access the Google Assistant API. And then we built a switch, which is what triggers the voice activation. And then we've put it all into a nice cardboard case. But this isn't the end. You can also extend this further. Now, Google have given instructions on how you can make your own triggers. And they've got a little demo project there where you can say light on, light off, and it will turn an LED on or off on your Raspberry Pi. And of course, that could be extended to all manner of things. So this kit is extensible and you can actually just change it to do home automation, to control robots, to do whatever you want to do that you can do on a Raspberry Pi. It can now be voice activated. I'm Gary Sims from Android Authority and I really do hope you enjoyed this look at how to make your own 
Google Assistant with a Raspberry Pi. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the Android Authority YouTube channel. Hit that bell so that you get notifications whenever we release a new video. And do go over to androidauthority.com because we are your source for all things Android.